Hey guys, Mr. O'Brien here. So in this video, again, this is our organic chemistry chapter of topic two. We're gonna be talking about biological macromolecules and how they form from monomers. So if we look at this, macro just is just a fancy word for big. So what we're talking about is big, large molecules here. And remember, monomers just means that they are made of one part. So we're talking about how macromolecules, which are many parts, are made of these monomers, which is the single unit of it. Now, again, macromolecules is a molecule that contains a very large number of atoms. And there's our large, okay, macro, such as a protein, nucleic acid, or synthesis polymer. Again, these proteins, nucleic acids and synthesis polymers, they're made of many, many repeating units called monomers. And again, a monomer is a single unit, or another name would be a building block called a monomer. So if we look down here, each one of these balls, or beads, however you want to say it, okay, there's nine of them. So there are nine individual monomers that combine together to form a polymer. And a polymer, just like uh, you know, poly means many, they will combine together using covalent bonds to form large molecules called polymers. So again, monomers combine together to form polymers. So again, all of these individual monomers, they're going to join together and they are joined with this little line right here, which is actually a covalent bond. And remember, covalent means that they are sharing electrons. Now, to form uh, polymers for monomers, the monomers release water molecules. So the releasing of water, or H2O, is a byproduct to form these large molecules. So this type of reaction is known as dehydration reaction. And a lot of people kind of get this confused because when you think dehydration, you're thinking taking out, right? Well, in this case, the water molecule is what's being taken out. It's being dehydrated or water is being removed. And what that does is it, it creates a bond. So again, the hydrogen and the oxygen are taken off and we form the bond between the molecules. So dehydration synthesis, the word means to put together while losing water. So that's the base, okay? So synthesis to put together dehydration, losing water. So we're losing water to put together. Now in dehydration synthesis reactions, two molecules of glucose are linked together to form what's known as a disaccharide. So in this process, a water molecule is formed. Again, notice how water is removed to create our bond. So again, here's our two monomers. Monomer one, monomer two, two monosaccharides. Water is removed to create one polymer or one large molecule. Now, polymers are broken down into monomers, so the other place, so we're going from big to small here, in a process known as hydrolysis. Now, hydrolysis means to split water. Okay, so in this case, here is the bond that we are trying to break water is added in and when we add that water we split the two molecules apart so again hydrolysis is splitting water well as dehydration would be adding water i'm sorry so hydrolysis is putting water in to split a molecule dehydration is taking water out to make a uh, to make a molecule or a polymer so in a hydrolysis it is a reaction in which water is used during the reaction to break the bond. So again, we have to remember water is added in here. So water is brought in in order to break this. So again, we are going from polymers, many, and we're breaking it apart to form our two monomers here. So hydrolysis, polymer to monomer, breaking bonds. So dehydration and hydrolysis reactions, these reactions are sped up 
by a specific en enzyme. So dehydration reactions involve the formations of new bonds, and they, I'm going red here, they require energy in order to do this. While most hydrolysis reactions break bonds, so they release energy. So hydrolysis is most often found in when you are breaking down sugars or foods. In our bodies, food is hydrolysized or broken down into smaller molecules by enzymes in our digestive system. Again, this is how we get energy. So again, it goes from chewing to churning, contact to the bloodstream, carrier proteins till eventually we get rid of it as a waste. Now, monomers and polymers are proteins. Okay, monomers of proteins are called amino acids. So amino acids are the monomer or the single unit that we have to make our proteins. So here are, are all of our amino acids. And eventually through chemical reactions, they link together and then they fold upon themselves to create our protein. So again, our monomer is our amino acids. Whereas our polymer, these amino acids joined together, are our proteins. Now, again, the monomers of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. So here is one nucleotide of DNA. So monomer, a bunch of these joined together to form DNA, are a polymer. So when nucleotides join together, they form a polymer called nucleic acid, which is our example of DNA. So the monomer of carbohydrate, again, this one's easy to remember because it's mono one saccharide sugar. So one sugar. Again, our monomer or a single unit. So here's our monosaccharide sugar. Notice how it is a single um, ring. Now here would be an example of the simplest polymer, a disaccharide. Okay, two monomers all, uh, joined together. And here is our polysaccharide, many joined together. So again, you can see the more you put together, the different names we call them. Now, lipids do not really have a monomer form, but what they do have is they're made of two individual parts. They're made of fatty acids and they're made of glycerols. So if I look down here, here is my glycerol molecule. Okay, so that glycerol molecule is bonded to three fatty acid tails. Okay, and again, this is called a triglyceride. Lipids are distinguished by this, these long chain, carbon chains. So notice these long chains, those are distinguishing of lipids. Okay, and because, you know, that's what makes them um, not be able to dissolve in water. So hopefully this helps you figure out the distinguishing of how polymers are formed. Remember, monomers, single unit, they combine together to form a polymer, which is many monomers joined together. Hopefully this helps you out. Again, this is Mr. O'Brien signing off.